We are all used to listening people talk about uh, the fact that machines are replacing human beings in our jobs. Is this a myth? Is it not? The truth is that all the time we see improvements in technology and higher levels of productivity. Factories that used to be like this now look like this. And 100 years ago, People already said that technology will take over our jobs. But the truth is that we can talk about many successes throughout the history of humankind. Some luxury uh, goods now became affordable goods to everyone. New needs are, arose as a result of the advent of uh, telephones, uh, TVs, uh, mobile phones, technology allowed us to um, double the um, life expectancy of people. So it brought about a lot of benefits. And the more we automated, uh, the more access to goods uh, was possible. And things that used to be luxury items, like a mobile phone, started being commoditized uh, items. But for a couple of decades already, we have seen some problems in finding new areas of technology that could create new jobs for to replace those that have been eliminated. The truth is that there is a need to grow and to sell more and to consume more in the system. And since there are no new markets, new, no new mass products that uh, give more employment to people, there is now a replacement by consumerism. We need more, there are no new markets, so I have to make sure that uh, the different products last less time so that they can be renewed. And we shouldn't even mention the disposable uh, products. So consumerism is helping us maintain the jobs, and many people claim that technological employment is a myth. In Argentina, unemployment rate is around 9%. So you may say, well, this is not so much. Of course, you have the workers who would say, no, technology is taking our jobs. But others may say, it's just 9% unemployment rate. Most of the people are employed. So out of those who are employed, what kind of jobs do they have? Some time ago, uh, an image became viral of a governmental agency that showed this chart. That 20% in blue shows the waged and um, independent workers that m pay most of the income taxes and um, support all the rest. And I. I'm under the impression that the informal sector, those that uh, have a social single tax to pay or the traditional single taxpayers, are not paying income taxes because they don't want. Um, um, they claim that people don't want to have a stable job uh, with uh, salaries that are levied taxes. And that is ridiculous. Of course, they cannot do that because they can't do that. It's not that they don't want to. They can't. So here we have the sector of people who pay income taxes on salaries and others that don't. And there is this general idea that the blame for the loss of well-being among these people um, has to be placed on the others. Uh, so this is a um, uh, global trend. Um, people are losing uh, purchasing power. There is a loss of purchasing power in the formal working class. And many people say that this is because the young generations don't want to work. So there is a confrontation between these two groups. At the same time, we know that never the world has been so rich. But I have a group that is seeing a loss in its in well-being and another group that is going through the same experience. Of those who have jobs, only 20% have quality jobs. So we are at historical low levels. 
So people work in jobs that nobody wants to accept and they are very poorly paid. So if the world is richer and wealthier, why is it that we have these losses? Why? Uh, because this move is incomplete. It seems that this is the totality, but there is a very clear chart that I'm going to show you now that was taken from a Bloomberg report based on Credit Suisse global data. So this is not a chart that I made up. And let's take a minute to look at the details in this chart. We see here wealth distribution in 2010 vis-a-vis -vis 2017. So we don't have such a long period of time here, 2010 and 2017. In yellow, we see the richest 1% of the population. And here it says that in 2010, this 1% held 36% of all wealth, but 2017, that 1% of the population already held 46% of all wealth. Now, that uh, figure has risen to 50%. That read 1% group uh, was not in the previous uh, chart. They do not make their money, their wealth, uh, based on salary, but on interest, on capital. They are the ones who are owners of financial income, of assets, and that was not included in the previous table. So where do we have wage earners? Here in the second sector, formal wage earners, in that 30%. In 2010, they held 68% of wealth, but now they hold 50% of wealth. So there was a drop in their well-being levels. So the, the amount of wealth has not uh, get, gotten smaller. It has grown. So the global population um, grows at three at one percent and wealth is growing at three percent so the richer are getting richer but in this context we see that wealth is in the hands of those who own technology and assets the new wealth that is being generated goes to their hands so the 30 percent of formal workers who now hold only 50% of the wealth, although the world is richer, they have a smaller share, they are being told that they have to blame this 68% that only held 4% in 2010 and now they hold 3%. It lost 25% of its income. So, both groups are being harmed by the system. The problem lies in the accumulation of wealth in a few hands. The, what you see in black and in gray here represents a sector that makes uh, its income from the salary obtained through working. So those who have money today have access to technologies that put workers at a greater disadvantage today. So we see increasingly precarious jobs now. Yes, of course, you can have a job if you want to work. This is the richest world. Uh, we have more wealth than ever before. We, ha we can produce food. It seems that there is abundance in reality, but that is not what you are told. You are told, well, if you want to work, we can offer you a job. And this is the new kinds of jobs that are being created almost like slavery. And we also face serious environmental problems because we are producing many goods in an inefficient way. So when we want to deal with those environmental issues, we see that that leads to fewer jobs. So it is almost impossible to think about uh, fighting environmental problems if we do not supplement people's income through other sources that do not depend on their work. That is why the citizen's role is so important, because now it is 
quite difficult to look for full-time jobs. That would be ridiculous. That wouldn't allow us to uh, fight against environmental problems. Technology is owned by all. Uh, company with $50,000 uh, could buy a robot and do whatever it was, but it is not fair that the company should engage in the production of uh, disposable products. That robot would be the result of the contributions by Volta, Far, um, Alan Turing, uh, Galileo. So it is not bad for all of us to benefit from that. And that is where we should be heading to. So we can no longer think about finding full-time jobs. We need to look for other mechanisms for wealth distribution through different mechanisms. The way production takes place today is leading us to a uh, mess. If you go to a supermarket, you see lots of shelves covered with uh, disposable products, which are completely unnecessary. As an engineer, you are taught that you need to create needs. John Sylvan, who invented and, uh, this uh, coffee pot, uh, um, seems to regret having done that because he realized that his invention was not needed actually. It might be give you more convenience, but it is better to protect the oceans. And we also have a serious environmental problem. Stephanie is going to talk about that. And we need to be more efficient. We need to effect changes in the energy sector. We need to stop burning oil to produce energy and for transportation purposes. We also have a problem with our diets uh, based on uh, the consumption of beef uh, that also um, has consequences in terms of deforestation. Are there solutions to these problems? Yes, of course, and we can improve on those solutions. But what about these solutions? These solutions do away with a lot of jobs. So, today, in Europe, they are trying to consider banning uh, single-use plastic products, but they realize that this may have a serious fallout, uh, so throughout the chain, so they ultimately decide to keep things as they are today. But we need to find another way to do this. We cannot continue having jobs that do not make sense um, to just to maintain the planet as it is. And we can also introduce changes in transportation and in uh, food and eating habits. So we need also to transition towards clean energies. Technology helps us be more efficient. Think that in 2005, you needed a lot of items to, for different tasks. But today, you just can concentrate everything in a smartphone. And this also re relates to the loss of jobs along the way. We already have electric cars, autonomous uh, driving uh, is quite advanced today. We just need a few years uh, to see this technology mature. And instead of having a car, you can call a Uber, but a driverless Uber car, that car could be shared. Uh, now we can solve mobility needs with 10 or 15 percent of the car a fleet that exists today with cars that would not pollute the environment, that would uh, make no noise, and that need very little maintenance. Of course, uh, that results in the elimination of many jobs. So the impact on the environment uh, may be very big, but um, if you consider the what would happen if we had all these cars, and then that, there would be a good solution for the environment. Clean energies are already affordable, cheap, competitive, and you may use batteries and solar panels uh, to, that may lead to sustainability. And now we also see meat that is chemical ident identical to the meat that we are consuming today, but uh, that requires no killing of animals. 
no use of water. So, and, and this kind of meat is created in laboratories. So, with uh, 100 times less water and space, you can have this kind of meat. But it will be very difficult for us to um, envisage a significant reduction of meat consumption. But of course, this brings about also a cut on jobs. In, Imagine in Argentina what would happen. So, when a robot takes a person's job, the person may say, well, where can I, how can I make a living now? But look at the entire history of humankind. Each technological solution was celebrated. If you have a group of collectors or hunters, somebody may come up with a new trap and they would get an animal and they would complain and say, no, they, actually they celebrated because they could have more time just to watch the stars, to practice poly love. Now society is asking not to have an invention of solutions to solve these problems. So it seems that everything is upside down. That is why we need a citizen's uh, income. So instead of telling you what we can do, I will tell you what I do. So I promise to make an effort to unlearn the culture of consumerism before buying something. I sincerely ask myself whether I need it. I adopt a habits that have a lesser environmental impact, although they may imply some inconvenience, like uh, just refilling um, bottles and buying um, products in bulk, uh, also living in a place, um, living, not, not living to work, but working to live, provided that uh, I can have some uh, benefit for the common good. I also promise to disseminate the reality of abundance in which the world is to create awareness about the need to redistribute wealth through an increase in uh, capital gains taxes and not labor gains taxes. Advocate radical changes such as the reduction of working hours and unconditional universal basic income because this will bring about social justice, abundance and freedom will reach us all and we can eliminate those senseless jobs that make people unhappy and go against the common good and sustainability. I promise to choose access over possession. I will only have a car if I really need it. I will try to make it last as much as possible. If I need to replace it, I will try to replace it with an electric car. And when available, I would use shared rides and autonomous vehicles instead of having one. I promise to promote renewable energies and the generation of energy in the home to reduce the consumption of meat in my diet. And whenever available to buy synthetic meat, I promise that I will be optimistic and I will celebrate having been born in these uh, times of abundance and vertiginous changes. Thank you so much.